If you're a content creator, you probably don't know about the five big mistakes that you're making right now. I started creating content when I was 10 years old. And if I had to restart my entire journey, these are the five things that I would avoid. The first is not having a wow factor. I create self-improvement content based on the movies that I watch. Now, I also make tutorials on how to create content, just like this video, and how to start a personal brand. Now, can you think of anyone else who's doing what I'm doing? Probably not. But has anyone ever asked you, what is your wow factor? And you're like, oh shit. <laughs> You have no idea because, you know, let's be real. You're probably watching this video because your content is boring and you know it. And you're trying to copy off other creators' ideas and content because they found success. The problem is this makes you inauthentic, not unique. And that's the main problem. It comes from your true self and that's how you create content based off of your character, based off of your interests. You take what you love. What do you love, man? Picture it in your head and then picture what you are good at from what you love. For example, I'm good at filming, I'm good at editing, and I'm also good at watching movies. <laughs> so I took all of those things and pretty much wrote them down under the list of what I am good at. Like, let's be real, would you stick to one boring niche for the rest of your creative journey? Or would you rather, you know, be flexible and adaptable with multiple different niches and create whatever content you want? And it's really going to set you apart from your competitors, which will make you different. And you have to be comfortable with being different because that's the price you have to pay for having a wow factor. So own it, own your wow factor. The second mistake that creators make is having no schedules. I made a weekly schedule for all of the content that I'm posting throughout the week. And the thing is, this changes every two seconds, but the point is having this type of thing keeps you organized and you know what you're actually posting throughout the week. It's not like you're spontaneously, oh, I feel like posting today, so I'm just gonna post. No, it's not like that. And it's also the case with managing your tasks. Every day I have delegated a specific task to do. On Monday, which is today, I am filming which says it right there. The next following days, I'm gonna be editing, making my thumbnails, etc. And from my experience, it's best to make these types of weekly timetables from Monday to Sunday and like name and set each task that you wanna do. So consider what kind of content you wanna post every day and write it down for every single day of the week and every platform that you are on. And if you're actually listening to me and planning to make your own schedule after watching this video, then make sure it's doable and not impossible for you to do. Make sure like if you've never done daily uploads and try and don't start with daily uploads, just start slow then you can scale later on and set a possible timetable for yourself the third mistake that creators face is having no systems now the schedules that i've created is also a part of my system but i've also implemented checklists and templates so that i can improve every single week so that's why i have checklists whenever i script my videos i do this because a lot of content creators i notice are a little bit too spontaneous with their process and that kind of discourages consistency when you don't have a system Here's an example of the checklist that I use. I call them weekly implementations. These are all the strategies that I'm trying out. I think this week, yeah, I think it should be this week. I think these two checklists are for this video that you're watching right here. So this part where it says writing means that I have to follow all of these whenever I write my script. And these are for my editing. This is how you improve your content, just like self-improvement, right? You set small goals and small targets that you use to implement new strategies and ideas. And you don't know what to implement if you don't know your mistakes if you don't know what you are doing wrong and you do that by analyzing your own content i know it sucks watching your own videos or looking at your own content so what i do is focus on those weaknesses and pretty much improve them i am weak at speaking i am weak at body language i'm weak at eye contact <laughs> And there's always something to work on because perfection does not exist. All right, don't give yourself the excuse of, oh, I am a perfect creator. I am doing so well. No matter how many views or followers or subscribers that you are getting or how fast you're growing, there's always something that you can improve on. That's why I always preach about how the process is the goal. The goal is the journey. I also teach how to create a content system inside my school community, which I will leave a link in the description below. The fourth issue that we face is not synthesizing content. I mentioned this before in terms of consuming my own content, but at the same time, you can also synthesize your competitors. So this is my schedule for synthesizing. I literally have a, <laughs> I have a schedule for consuming content, which is so weird, but that's how I am. Again, be comfortable being different. Anyways, on Mondays, I consume my own content and analyze my own content, my long form videos. On Tuesday, I watch a movie so I can take notes. And on Wednesdays, I consume my competitors content which 
is pretty much my subscriptions. I subscribe to all my competitors on Wednesdays and then I repeat the same thing with their short form for the rest of the week. So this is what my page looks like on Notion whenever I write down notes and uh, yeah, I love Notion. Now I mentioned this before, but in terms of analyzing my own content, I literally just go to YouTube studio and look at either my viewer retentions. I reflect on my scripts and the mistakes that I made on my scripts. I review the way I speak to the camera. I look at the editing style that I used and look for the mistakes that I should avoid and write them down. Like literally write down the mistakes that I made. And then after that, come up with implementations that where I can improve and avoid those mistakes for the next batch, for the next week. So these are my competitors, <laughs> Alex Hormozzi, Hamza, Heinz, and Dan Co. Basically what I do is just consume their long form and short form content and just take notes, take as many notes as possible. Notes about their script writing, notes about their filming techniques and take all of that and pretty much steal the winning ideas where I can implement and authenticate in my own content. And lastly, I just watch movies and take notes so that I can learn lessons and share them on my YouTube channel. The final mistake that creators make is having no commitment. Let me ask you a question. Do you wanna make this work? Like how far are you willing to go? Where do you wanna go with this? Cause you know, you need a clear goal. My goal is 10,000 subscribers. That is my medium term goal that I that is completely achievable and completely reasonable. What do you want out of this? If you actually want to grow, then you cannot treat this as a side hustle. A lot of you believe this is your passion and you, you stay consistent for a reason because you love what you do and it's still possible for you to make it a, a career. It's not impossible, right? That is exactly why you can't half-ass your work because true creators believe in the message that they spread, so they just go all in. Like they just dive head straight in as if there's no plan B. I love saying that quote, no plan B. How bad do you want it? Because let's be real, like most of you don't want it as bad as I do. I want this shit to work. I need it to work because I don't see myself doing anything else other than this. And that's why you guys can't stay consistent because you don't have the passion, you don't have the commitment. And success isn't measured by the amount of subscribers and followers you have or the views you get. I hope you guys know that, right? Like we're not dumb here. Success is measured by fulfillment and purpose and how much you pretty much help people and your impact on the world, right? It's much more than materialistic uh, achievements. Another big question is how long can you keep posting content every single day without having results? Like imagine if you just posted content for like 10 years straight and every single piece of content has not gotten the results that you wanted, has not gotten viral. Like imagine that, why would you keep going? There's only one reason because you're so obsessed with the process, because you are in love with creating, because this is what you are called to do. Like you cannot explain this into words because that, that is what your heart, mind and soul is all about. You have committed to this art. So my motto is you need to have a creative obsession. Otherwise you'll just give up. Like it's kind of obvious. If you don't, if you don't love what you do, then <laughs> you're just gonna give up so easily. Like good luck, you know? If you're in it for the views, the followers, man, I will not see you doing the same thing in 10 years time, in 20 years time. You guys might use discipline or hard work or motivation to keep you going. I don't. Discipline does not keep me consistent. I posted six months straight without going viral and, and I just keep posting because, not because of discipline, but because I love the process. It's simple. So you need to be okay with getting low views and low followers and low metrics and pretty much just erase that out of your mind because that's what I'm trying to do. And I know it's hard, it's really hard. Like I'm, I'm still struggling with that myself but it's the truth. Like you have to erase that out of your mentality because that is going to hold you back from your true creative potential. So if you've made a commitment into becoming a creator like me, then I'm more than happy to invite you to join my school community. The link is in the description once again.